All right, guys, this is uh, FSD 13.2.7. I just got it actually a few days ago while I was in Mexico, but I got home last night. So uh, the first video I'm gonna do testing it is just gonna be the test loop video. You can look back on my channel and see I've done the same loop with the same stops kind of for the last like five or six versions. Um, I don't think there's a lot of major changes in this. The release notes are identical to 13.2.2, but as always, I just like to kind of test it and see if there is any changes so I put in the route for the whole loop um, this spot is quite snowy so I'm actually curious what it's going to do, do here um, we'll see it should just be able to get out to the road though it might have to back up Okay, so very like hesitant leaving off the snow onto the um, actual road, but good job going, I guess, overall. Um, and I'll leave it in standard for this whole drive. So straight away, good job, speed limit 60. We're going 62, which I'm totally happy with here. Acceleration was really nice. Um, feels similar, I would say, to 13.2.2. The only thing coming back, but you won't see it in this test loop, like this is a this road is 60, which is correct, but coming back it recognizes it recognizes this road as a max 40. So it's weird that this way it understands that the road is 60, but driving backwards on this exact same road, it will show 40. Okay, and then yeah, just I mean for any of you that don't know, if you watch here, this green, that means we're using all regen braking, which is great. That's what you kind of want to see. If it goes gray or any other color, um, that means it's using the physical actual brakes to slow the car down. So that was good. Nice smooth stop, all regen braking. And then off the go here, nice job. It's hard. Contextually, we're going under the speed limit, but it's a residential neighborhood. So going 42 in this 50, I don't feel like we're going that slow. And then straight away here, we're gonna be going into a school zone. I'm almost certain it isn't fixed and we'll try to speed, but then there's speed bumps. So it kind of struggles to speed, but we'll see what happens here. So good job stopping and going right away. So yeah, it's recognizing 30, that's perfect. We're going 32, but we're gonna slow down now for the speed bump. Nice job. And then you'll see here it'll probably, yeah. So I think if these speed bumps weren't here, the speeding would be a little bit more of a problem, but the time that it has between these speed bumps, it doesn't get to speed more. Um, so no intervention required there. Nice job on all the speed bumps though. And then what I'm doing here, if you haven't watched this test loop before, is I put the car down this alleyway here. Came in, okay, that was really bad. So it, it sucks, it's snow. Like we came in way too fast for as bumpy as that road was. Um, and it really didn't like handle the road properly, I would say, like not like a human driver would, it's fine. Okay, I'm removing the stop. It's gonna force us to have to do a U-turn in here. So we'll see what happens. So it's done totally fine in the past here. Um, interesting. I definitely put the stop in well before we stopped. So I'm surprised that it destination parked rather than just try to reroute, but that's not a huge deal. Maybe I was a little bit late changing it. That's kind of new behavior. It may not look like it, but like we backed up more towards the curb than I ever have while doing this um, turnaround before the bumper wouldn't get anywhere close to the curb. So we just have this. And I've kind of talked about, it, it's hard on video, it might not get picked up. The car didn't hit the um, 
basketball net, which is great, so you can't really fault it, but it gets way closer than a human would. Like a human would have just gone around that more and given you a lot more like confidence that you're not gonna hit it. So perhaps the car's abilities are that it can get within a millimeter of that net and know that it's going to, but I really strongly disagree with that and I don't think that it should. I think that giving a wider berth, especially if you can, the road's dead empty, the car should have slammed on the brakes there. That was really bad. Um, the car should just give a lot more space, kid. It's really doing a poor job of all the snow. There's, it's very jerky. Um, yeah, sorry. I just think the car should go around objects more than just like just cutting it in that close when it doesn't need to. If it was a tight space and there was a bunch of things that it had to do that, sure. But if it's an empty road, it should not do that. All right. So we're gonna be coming into another park zone here. So we're on max 50. We're probably gonna see the 30 in a second here, I would imagine. Yeah, so now we're dropping to 30. And slowing down for the speed bump. Another speed bump here, good job. Um, so this morning, actually, AI Driver posted a video. I haven't watched yet because it was just as I was leaving the house, but um, he does a whole video detailing how FSD handles driving in the snow. Um, I'm curious to watch it because from the little bit that I've used it, I think FSD sucks in the snow. I think it works by accident when it does work. But, uh, I mean, as we just saw right there, like, we turn that corner onto an icy, bumpy road way too fast, kind of got all slammed around, and then coming out, we slammed on the brakes and sort of slid on the ice. Like, just in those two minutes of driving, very uncomfortable, and that's 100% related to the snow condition. So I'm curious to see what JD's thoughts are on FSD in the snow. Um, okay, so as always, and I've talked about this a million times, but I'll just bring it up. We've left the 30 zone. It still says max 30 though. Like we are on a max 50 road. The car doesn't understand that. So we're now driving under the speed limit and it's gonna change once we go through this roundabout. So I'm not gonna intervene, but not ideal. Like the car shouldn't, the car should understand that we're through the school, the school zone or park and be driving 50 again. Uh, roundabout here, for the longest time, it's done a really good job with these, so it signals out and signals in properly, which is a really nice change. Good job there. Okay, and then we should signal right. I think that's a little bit too early if you are gonna signal for the roundabout. Like it's great that it's signaling, but it should wait until it passes that turn to show that this is the turn that it's signaling for. And this is still something I don't understand. We've now lost our, okay, we have our driver, driver profile. If you looked at the video as I started talking there, this standard had disappeared. So the bouncing in and out of like having a driver profile is something that still doesn't really make sense to me. I don't know what roads and what criteria need to be met for there to be a driver profile present. Okay, so we have three speed bumps here that FSD has definitely struggled with in the past. I will disengage just because I don't want to hit these at full speed if it is missing them. Um, it's also a 50 zone we're going. Okay, good speed limit now. Okay, so the first speed bump is right here where this kind of tow truck is parked, so we should slow down and move over. Maybe we slowed down, we're 30, yes, yeah, so we slowed down and we moved over, so good job there. Another one here, we're not slowing down for it, so it missed a speed bump there. FSD missed seeing speed bump. 
Okay, so I'm re-engaging. And we're just going slow enough that it didn't slow down, but I would bet that it didn't see that one either. So that's too bad that it's still not catching speed bumps properly. That's kind of been, those speed bumps especially have been, for as long as I've been doing test loops on this exact loop, have always been an issue. I have no idea why. Like sometimes it does speed bumps flawlessly. Other times it fully just misses them and that set of them it really struggles with. Okay, good job slowing down for this guy. Signaling, in my opinion, too early. I, I would have signaled half that distance. Um, it's good to let people know what you're doing, but signaling half a block ahead is kind of awkward, just to be critical of that behavior. Sorry, I'm trying to remember to maximize the map, but I have to uh, minimize it to edit the trip every single time, so my apologies. Okay, good job there. Speed was under the speed limit, but I'm okay with that. Residential area, tight road. I didn't feel like there was an intervention was necessary at all there. Nice job, super smooth, kind of nothing really noteworthy, but well done there. And then coming up here, there's two things I'm kind of looking out for. The first is when we get to this red light, I want to see that the car puts itself over in the right lane so that when we're turning right, we're not affecting the traffic on the left lane. And I would love for the car to turn right on red confidently. And doing so, this is two lanes of traffic. It'd be great if there was no traffic in the right lane, traffic in the left lane, and it decided, oh, it's too bad. We got a green light. Okay, so pulling into a business here to see how the destination park works without it being a full feature yet. Um, we have to use the suicide lane. We got a car here pulling out, nice. Okay, so we should get into the suicide lane now. Nice job, and then we'll just have to wait a little bit here to turn left. The other versions, like just a few versions ago, were struggling. They would pull into that. Um, if we go now, perfect. It would pull into that other spot. So really good job that it's pulling in here. And I think once or twice I've had it like park awkwardly, but park here. So there's a chance that we'll get a, a parking or it may just stop in the middle. We'll see what happens here. Okay, so I'm just gonna start from here. We didn't get a destination park, that's okay, but I'm just gonna press and hold to start FSD for our last spot and see what it does to turn us around in here. I would go up here where there's a ton of space and just do like a three-point turn. I don't know what it's doing. It should not do what it's doing. No. So you can see, I can read, you could probably read, employees only beyond this point. It's trying to pull into like a private area to turn around, um, which is not correct. So I'm just disengaging, turning us around, and then I'll start it again here. So that's too bad. That's definitely like a fail by FSD. It should have just turned around here and spit us out and then turned left on this road. And instead, it's trying to go into public or private property to turn around. That's for sure the situation where this car, it needs to read or it needs to have better map data because it's going to get itself into problem. Like if you were in a, if you'd gotten picked up from this destination by a cyber cab and then it started driving into like a private road, um, that would be a problem, right? And they're talking about cyber cab as soon as June. So I would go right now and I would sit in the left lane. I would just actually, it's gonna get a go. There's no traffic. So nice job there. Yeah, like FSD is so impressive. 
the mistakes that it makes are for sure minor and there's no doubt like it, it, it absolutely makes big mistakes too but like on this drive a lot of its mistakes are just like little funny quirks or this or that or but in a world where it's February middle of February February 14th we're looking at March April May June we're four and a half months away from Tesla saying that they're going to have cyber cab rolling out in Austin I just don't see how that's possible unless they're on version 14 and know something we don't because version 13 very good uh it's not intervention free and that's what you need for a cyber cab to work like if if we'd done this drive in a cyber cab there would have been we would have ended up in private property we would have been going over po- or speed bumps like uncomfortably fast and kind of getting jostled around on an icy back road speeding in a school zone all little things but big problems when you're sitting in the back seat of the car wanting it to do everything perfect so yeah like I'm not trying to be too negative but it's just it hurts Tesla's credibility when they try to overclaim how good it is like if they were just like fsd is the best level two consumer adas system on the market it's not perfect but look at what it can do no one could really refute that because that is the reality but when tesla says you know fsd version 13 is nearly perfect there's no issues the mistakes it makes aren't safety critical and cybercab is going to roll out in june to me as a person that drives daily with fsd and spends a lot of time with it I generally don't see how that's happening. I just, I don't know. Prove me wrong. Let's see. Timestamp this. Four and a half months from now, I hope, I hope I'm eating my words and I would love for CyberCab to succeed. I want Tesla to succeed. I love full self-driving. I just, I'm just being realistic. But anyways, I hope that was good. That's my test loop video. For those of you that do watch these, I appreciate it. Um, Yeah, I'll do a full drive after this. I'm probably going to park and then uh, do a more like in-depth just FSD drive, but this is just the test loop. And uh, I appreciate you all watching. I'll see you on the next one.